heard tonight that we need to expect change, not just not just plan to change, but expect it. Lord Jesus, I just humble myself before you right now, Lord. I am not my own. I've been bought with a price. I am yours. And I worship you with my mind, my soul, my spirit, and my strength. Everything within me, Lord, is yours. I don't just worship you on Sundays. I don't just worship you on Wednesday nights. I worship you 24-7 throughout the week. While I'm at work, my work is worship unto you. When I'm at home, my family life is worship unto you. When I'm at recreation, my leisure time is worship for you. Let everything that I do, Lord, glorify you. Let me not do anything from selfish ambition, but humble myself before you, Lord, and allow you to steer and guide my life in the direction you want to take me. In Jesus' name and by the blood of the Lamb. Colossians 3, verse 1 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Lord. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Down in verses 12 through 17 it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humbleness, Meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so also you must do. But above all things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and understanding, excuse me, teaching and administering to one another, in passions and in hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Right there. Do everything as unto the Lord. About a week and a half ago, I was at work over at the hotel. And I've not really been excited about being back at that hotel for several reasons, which I'm not going to go into great deal detail about, but just the way it's managed is not preferable to my ethics. 
I'll just leave it at that. And one of the graces that the owner has given me there is, during downtime, I'm allowed to lay down and go to sleep. I can sleep on the job, as long as I get up to serve the guests if they need it. Well, that can be a good thing and a bad thing. Because when I'm really busy with all, all the rest of my life and I get tired, then I go to work. I look forward to that downtime at work coming around so that I can lay down and go to sleep. Even though there's nothing to do, even though I'm finished with all my work. However, if I get really tired and I haven't quite finished my work, there's still that temptation to say, well, I'll lay down and then I'll get up and finish it in a little while or when before I leave sometime. And about a week and a half ago, I did that. I laid down and I thought, I'll go ahead and get up and finish what I've got to do when before, before, before I have to leave. I have plenty of time. And as soon as I laid down, the conviction of the Holy Spirit came on me and says, you need to do it now. Now, nobody was watching me. Nobody but the Lord. I could have laid right there and just ignored that, that thought. I got back up. I went ahead and took care of the job that I knew I had to do, and I went back and laid down again. Again, the thought came to me, oops, there's one more thing I haven't done. Should I lay here or should I get up? Well, nope. I better obey the Holy Spirit, get up, complete my work, and then go back and lay down. And then I rested. But even after I rested, or when I laid back down to rest, I couldn't truly rest. Because I knew that I had questioned in my heart whether or not to get back up and finish what I was supposed to do in the first place. Rather than just going ahead and taking care of all of my duties, like I should have, and then if there was time, lay down. I went ahead and tried to take it easy. And the Lord convicted me of it. Over in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 5, Correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor. It's the one that speaks of the, it's the verse that's, the, the passage that speaks about the rapture. 1 Corinthians 5.17? No, there's no 5.17. No, that's 2 Thessalonians, but there's also one in, there's also one in Corinthians. I'm trying to remember what it is. It's not as it's not as common a one, but it is also there. It's the one that says, "This corruptible must put on incorruption." You familiar with that passage? I'm sorry. It, it, First Corinthians 15. I'm sorry. Yes, our final victory. That's the one I was looking for. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption put on incorruption. Excuse me, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpets will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We've been talking about change. We shall be changed. Are we going to wait for that change to happen, or are we going to start working on it now? We shall be changed, but we don't have to wait. 
in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of, the sin is lo- the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What labor are we talking about there? Are we just talking about the work we do at our job? No. We're talking about the work we're doing for the Lord. Sure, my job that I'm doing, I'm doing for the Lord. But even though someone else isn't watching me, the Lord is. Therefore, I should be mindful that everything I do should be done for the Lord. Whether it's my homework, whether it's my studies, my leisure time, my job, just driving down the road for that matter. Whatever I'm doing should be done for the Lord. And the time is getting shorter, which makes it all the more imperative that we use our time wisely. How can we do that, though, if we're not sensitive to the Holy Spirit? We need to have that connection with God where we're hearing from Him. We need to be listening to what God is directing us to do. One of the things that God has been dealing very heavily with me on my heart is my character. The songs that we sang tonight were talking about humbling ourselves, talking about doing everything for the Lord. I thought, wow, Lord, this is, this is fantastic. And then to have Pastor get up and mention that he's concerned about the, the, us being changed, essentially. Just fed right into what God wanted me to share. So, we've got the scriptures to point us to the need for change. But how do we put on immortality? How do we put on incorruption? We put it on through a personal relationship with Jesus. An intimate personal relationship with Jesus. Drawing closer to him every moment. Making him the very center of our life. In other words, focusing the crosshairs of our sight on the Lord so that they line up with the cross. We've got to somehow, I shouldn't say somehow, we simply need to make Jesus the center of our life. He's already made the way. Can I say much more? I feel like the Holy Spirit is wanting to do something more tonight, but I feel like what I'm supposed to say is done. I'm just going to call on Pastor right now. I'm going to call you, Pastor.
Pastor Steve, if you would, please, to just take it from here. Brother Dell, uh, you have, in a very short period of time, you have spoke volumes tonight. I've shared this with the church before, and church, this is when you can tell you're really starting to grow spiritually. I've shared with you before how. I was vacuuming the church and I would miss that little piece of paper underneath the pew and where it would be under the crack where I couldn't get to and I would just go on by, well, nobody will see it or I can't get to it. The Lord would speak to me about it. 